Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Well, it's time for a video with our brand new seasoning, pork ribs with Texas sugar. This is gonna be what I call a Texas style pork rib. We've got a video like that on our YouTube channel that is extremely popular. So we're gonna follow that method, but we're gonna season differently. And in this time, I'm not actually gonna sauce it at the end because I really wanna highlight this seasoning. So let's talk about this. You know I always say make recipes your own and I don't push my seasonings on you, but let's just be honest. I'm the CEO at Meat Church, the founder, develop all of these products and people are gonna to wanna to know um, how to use this stuff. So Texas Sugar, very excited. It's our first new product in two years, and it's a very balanced, sweet heat pork and poultry rub. Now, the name, just a cool name I dig. Uh, there's a restaurant in Irving called Mexican Sugar, and that always stuck with me. You know our little mascot, Mito Bandito. Thought he'd look good with a Texas shirt on, and so I like the name. It is not overly sweet. In fact, um, it has less sugar in it than six of our other rubs. It's a balanced rub. Um, making a balanced rub is a key and something I focus on and have worked on this tirelessly. This is a rub that myself and a bunch of friends used in competition for a long time on pork and chicken. And so I think you guys are going to love it. Um, it's great on pork. It's great on pulled pork. It's great on chicken. And it's also epic on turkey. So you're going to see a lot of this um, come this fall. So let's get into this. So I've got a rack of prairie fresh spare ribs straight out of the package as you can tell i've done nothing uh nothing nothing to this other than i've peeled the membrane off of it so i'm going to flip it over get a little trim going on this real quick um, trim as much or as little as you like i always cut this last bone off it's super thin and i kind of do the same down here on this end i'm going to square them up Frankly, just remove uh, any excess fat uh, and then get to seasoning. Like I said, we've already peeled the membrane here. Any big time fat I want to shave away. I usually lay meat side up so I can square these up. And why do I do that? This is really thin down here and that's not gonna cook evenly. Always trim your meat straight out of the fridge. I've actually had these out in the outdoor kitchen, so the fat has warmed up a little. So the knife's pretty sharp, believe it or not, but um, fat's difficult to deal with uh, when it's starting to warm up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna start on the bone side. You could slather these if you want with mustard. I love doing that. I just didn't bring mustard out here today. Um, so I'm just gonna go straight seasoning. Now, I always season within one hour of the cook, and this is gonna be a pretty heavy application. It's not gonna be overly salty. I want 100% coverage. I'm gonna pat it in with my hand since we're shooting a video. Um, if you had a binder, it would adhere a little bit quicker. I'd love to let this sit 15, 20 minutes, flip and repeat the process. But again, since we're in video mode, I'm gonna flip it over, do the other side. Here we go, you'll be able to see it much better this way. So let me talk about this rub. I mentioned it's a sweet heat. It does have a little sugar. It does have a little honey powder, which is a calling card of a couple of our rubs and you guys love, which I think is a key to really good pork. It's got some, uh, it's got some unique stuff in it. Got a little bit of, got some peppers in it. So it's just a subtle heat on the back end. It's kind of like Voodoo. I don't consider Voodoo hot. It just on the back end has a little kick to remind you it's there. This does the same thing. The difference in this and Voodoo, Voodoo is very salt forward. Um, this is not salt forward, so it's, it's slightly different, but I think you guys are going to love it. I know you're going to love it. Easy enough. I'm going to allow this to sweat out. I usually let it adhere for an hour. I'm giving it 15 minutes. I'm going to go get my Traeger going at 250 degrees, and we'll be back here to put these on. You can see this is sweated out completely. Uh, it's nice and wet. That's just the seasoning pulling the moisture out of the ribs, so it's time to cook. 
Very straightforward cook. A Texas style pork rib at a barbecue joint here in Texas is basically cooked on a smoker and not wrapped. It's only wrapped in foil at the end to hold it till service. So we're gonna cook these straight through just like this. Very simple, 250 degrees. I'm using meat church pellets, which is oak and hickory. And uh, we're just gonna let it roll. The only thing I'm gonna do during the cook is I'm gonna spritz this with cider vinegar a couple times, um, you know, since we're not saucing it or anything like that. And we're looking for them to be about 200 internal when we pull it, um, and that's it. Because they're gonna sit and rest and be nice and tender. So very, very easy. Beautiful looking color from the Texas sugar. So on they go. It's probably gonna take five hours or so, but we'll monitor it all along the way and then we'll see y'all then. A lot of new outdoor cooks ask me, what insulated gloves do you wear? Well, these are just cotton string gloves that I get at Harbor Freight, uh, and then I pull nitrile gloves over the top. So you can handle 200 degree meat with no problem. So let's talk about these ribs. They've been cooking for five hours, pretty much on the mark. I just temped them, and they were around 200. Now, I've told you in some videos, you can, uh, you can you know, go further with them, but I'm, I'm going around 200 of these because I don't want these to be fall off the bone. If you like fall off the bone, then you know continue to cook them till they're a higher internal temperature. So let's see how they look. And I spritzed them with cider vinegar three times during the cook, as I mentioned. And you can see they're uh, they're really pretty. It's got a, a beautiful red color, which is you know kind of what I was hoping for. Uh, they smell awesome. You can see bits of pepper in there. Um, this is going to be pretty hot, so I can't cut into these right away, but also the bone pop. Visually look for the bone pop. When you see, you know, a quarter inch pop, third inch, you know without even temping it, you're close to being done. And then with my instant read, you know, I check uh, in between the bones and I feel for tenderness. And then the last, the third thing I look at is the number on the thermometer. So let's let these cool off. I'm going to go get something to drink and I'll see you back here when it's time to see how we did. All right, guys, let's see how we did. Got the old Iron Grove knife here. Of course, I caught a bone. Well, first off, perfectly cooked, not to brag. Look at that smoke. The ironwood did its thing. Man, here we go. I ain't mad at that. I told you I wanted to bite through rib. That's my favorite rib. Damn, that's good. I love the flavor. <clears throat> this clearly was all about seasoning. No sauce, cooked straight through, no frills. That's just a straight up good smoked rib that I could eat every day of the week. Man, the, the seasoning is great. It's a sweet heat. So you're not gonna bite this and be like, oh, it's hot. It's not hot at all. I mean, it's actually very, very subtle. Um, it's definitely not overly sweet. It's just, I'm just gonna call it, I think one of, if not our most well-balanced barbecue rub. Just great Southwestern flavor. I think you guys are gonna dig it. If you guys like this, go down and subscribe, hit the alerts. We drop weekly, no shtick, straightforward how-to outdoor cooking videos every Wednesday. So you guys subscribe if you like what we're doing. We'll see y'all next time.